Y254. Imagine. Well, welcome back to our Health uh, Wednesday. And if you're just joining us, our discussion today is on how to deal with depression. And so uh, uh, today, our guest today is Samson Maina, as I had said earlier. And welcome, Samson. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, he is both, um, he, uh, Samson is both a depression survivor and a counselor. So, well, how uh well i would want you to tell us first of all how 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 was uh well how was you tell us briefly about your depressed uh, about your uh, your story on depression uh good evening viewers my name is meshak samson minor and uh, i am 32 years old now i like saying that because uh, my history with depression comes with es okay. i have one of the longest uh, histories with the depression because mine went all the way to almost 20 years because the first time I attempted suicide, I was around 13 years. So now it is about 19 to 20 years. Eh? But now I have healed. I'm uh, three years down the line going through counseling and uh, other things. I started uh, having issues with, within myself when I was very young. Because of uh, coming from a family whereby people are not united. Eh? And when you are growing up, you look at people and you start thinking like, uh, some people are mistreating others. You don't know what is going on, but you're feeling like something is not right. Mm -hmm. And in the course of you trying to comprehend what is going on, and you are young, your brain is growing, and uh, you are in your teenage years, I started developing issues uh, mm -hmm. whereby I could not understand myself. And along the line, I found myself contemplating death so many times. I did not know what was going on, and that was back in the year 1999 coming to 2000. And in the year 2000, I attempted the first suicide. Uh, I thank God because it failed, and uh, two years down the line I attempted the second suicide, three years down the line the third suicide, and after all of them failed, I got to a point I started feeling like death is not a solution, mm -hmm. I have to keep fighting. But you know the problem is I did not go through any counseling or any emotional help. I grew up with it, went to high school after high school to campus. I was in Kenyatta University doing Bachelor of Arts in uh, Economics and Sociology and uh, within Sociology I did some uh, counseling courses within there. I could not understand what was going on, but I knew something was seriously wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, after graduating I tried getting jobs here and there, I could not keep a job because I was always frustrated, I felt like quitting every time. I got jobs in three companies, two banks and one insurance company, I could not keep a job. So I resigned and went back home. Through the struggles of financial challenges and I'm still going through my depression, issues with my life are still not healed, I have not gotten any solution to any problem. I got to a point that I felt I was trying, I, I was going to try another death. And maybe that time it would have succeeded. But I thank God because in the year 2016, around February, I gave up the fight and decided to look for help. And that is the time I started going through counseling. Okay. And uh, after four or five months down the line making new friends, mm -hmm. uh, meeting counselors and uh, some spiritual help too, I started getting healed and that's why today I'm here. Wow, quite a story there, Samson. And so that leads me to a question I've always been meaning to ask. Who gets depressed? Like now, well, Actually, uh, you're the first person I've heard who say they started as early um, as in their teens. Yes. So, well, do children get depressed? Actually, the problem we are having in this country is because so many people who are depressed at their old age mm -hmm. started getting depression when they, are, they were kids. They are, there is so much going on in our families. And one of the reasons I'm saying this is because we have seen a lot of domestic violence murders in the families, breakups and divorce. Mm -hmm. Children get hurt more than the adults in the family. But they don't have anybody to tell. Because you know when you are growing up, mm -hmm. there is the element of family secrets. Even if your father and your mother fight, you cannot tell anybody about it. Yeah. So you have to keep it within yourself. And you also cannot be able to help them solve their problem. Mm -hmm. So you might be understanding who is mistreating who, but you don't have a say in this whole, this whole scenario because you are a kid, yeah. these are adults having mm -hmm. their adult issues, you cannot be able to, in, to, to intervene. Okay. So kids get depressed as young as six years. 
when somebody starts to understand there is love and there is hate. Mm -hmm. There is bitterness and then there is a time family is happy, another time a family is in wars. Yeah. That is the age that people start getting depressed. We have seen children like another one, I think it was in Bugoma last month, mm -hmm. that committed suicide at the yeah. age of eight. It was a class two kid. So now looking at class two kid committing suicide, it tells you this child started getting depression as young as five years. But within the age of five to ten years, mm -hmm. that is the time somebody starts to understand my mom loves me so much yeah. than my dad. Or my dad loves me so much than my mom. Or my dad and my mom are not in good terms because they are quarreling all the time. Yeah, so true. from that I young age, somebody can get depression. Okay. Yes. And so, well, uh, other than domestic issues, what are the other causes of depression? As uh, and especially for young people, like uh, young people, well, up to 30-something in their 30s. Uh, according to what I have dealt with, mm -hmm. Personally and uh, from the experience I have from dealing with people, I classify this into four. One, there is the medical part of it, whereby mm -hmm. some people are born with bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. and this is automatic depression. You get it, you have no idea what is going on, it is a disease that should be treated medically. And there are also other issues that come with the medical part of it, whereby mm -hmm. you might be getting a, a treated for another disease, but the drugs you're getting happen to trigger something into your met uh, mental capacity mm -hmm. or you are, your brain cells get uh, interfered with. Mm -hmm. It can cause depression. But this is not common. Okay. It gets like into one out of ten people. The second part of it is the financial. So many young people don't have jobs. They don't have money. People are struggling out here. And uh, when somebody gets to a, a point whereby they are feeling like they don't have any hope, they are in a situation whereby if you give them money right now, mm -hmm. you have solved every problem they mm -hmm. have. True. But because they don't have it, and every day they wake up, they think about it. Every day they go to sleep hungry, they go to sleep with a lot of debts. Tomorrow I don't know whether my rad road will come. These issues grow into their mind mm -hmm. and they become part of their life. So instead of them thinking about how to grow themselves, mm -hmm. they are thinking about the problems they have. That is the second part. Mm -hmm. The third part is the human relationships how you and I read it. Whether it is in family, it is in your workplace, it is in your school, mm -hmm. the way you relate with people. People can interfere with your life and try to make decisions for you. Mm -hmm. Of which, when you refuse to integrate what they are telling you into, to you, mm -hmm. now you become part of the struggle. Mm -hmm. You get a struggle into your mind whereby you understand what they are telling you. Might be helpful to you, but your mind doesn't want to take it. So now you start creating chaos between you and the people around you. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the greatest issues we have in this country. Mm -hmm. Human relationships, mm -hmm. in marriages, in relationships, where you were born, you have a crisis between you and your mother, you and your father, your mm -hmm. siblings. This, this chaos are causing depression, mm -hmm. and especially marriages yeah. within young people. We will discuss about the, what marriages come into to this whole thing because that is where the biggest problem is. Yeah. But the, the last category, the fourth one, is a history of suicide in the family. Mm -hmm. You have a grandfather who committed suicide 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. 30 years down the line, somebody else comes and commits suicide. Mm -hmm. 10 years later, somebody else commits suicide. When you look at the family tree, in like 60 people who are related by brand, yeah. whether it's distant, close, mm -hmm. you see we have like five people who have committed suicide. Mm -hmm. if within that family, there is a high risk of somebody else continuing the trend. And the problem comes because when somebody commits suicide mm -hmm. in a family, you are supposed to take that whole family through counseling mm -hmm. for them to accept what happens. Because there are two types of death. What we call natural death, it can come from a disaster mm -hmm. or a disease or an accident and people tend to heal very fast. Mm -hmm. If somebody dies from a disease, the family will mourn. One month later, these people have already accepted what happened and they are starting to continue with their life. But when somebody is killed or kill themselves, there's the homicide mm -hmm. and then suicide. People never heal. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, 
Mm -hmm. Not many people understand this element. Yeah. People never heal from a death caused by murder or suicide. And that is why when you see somebody is brutally killed in a family, mm -hmm. these people have to go through counseling. And that's why you see institutions like Kenya Red Cross, St. John Ambulance and mm -hmm. others, holding counseling sessions for people when we have terror attacks, when we have disasters that mm -hmm. kill a lot of people. Because these people have to be taken through the emotional healing part of it. And if you don't do it, or you, you do it and you don't do it correctly, you are going to mess up with these people. Mm -hmm. Because those two types of deaths, suicide and homicide, mm -hmm. families never heal. So you find that in the family tree, so many people have attempted suicide and some of them have succeeded. And this can be prevented through taking the whole family through counseling. Okay. Yes. Well, um, and how, uh, what are the signs and symptoms? How do you know that someone is depressed or you as a person is depressed? Uh, the first sign that you get is withdrawal. Mm -hmm. You can withdraw from anything. Withdraw from your relationship with friends. Okay. You withdraw from your hobbies. You start withdrawing from your business. You find yourself trying to get time alone. Like uh, you have had friends, uh, colleagues at work, you have relatives. You are trying to withdraw from their relationship and you tend to spend time alone whereby mm -hmm. you feel like you are comfortable when you are alone. This is a red flag. Mm -hmm. Anytime you feel like you don't want to talk to people you have been talking to, mm -hmm. or you don't want to wake up that early morning, go to the same work that you do and help you pay your bills, mm -hmm. this is a red flag. Something is seriously wrong. Okay. But when it, uh, it continues, and people don't uh, happen to realize that you are going through something, it now gets to another stage whereby you are starting to feel bitter. Mm -hmm. Because life is pushing you to do the same things that you don't want. Maybe I am calling you and you don't feel like you want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I call you twice, thrice, it starts to make you feel angry. Yeah. You start developing bitterness towards the same things you have been doing all along. Mm -hmm. But now they are starting to become a bother to you. Mm -hmm. And when you are trying to solve this, you find yourself alienating yourself completely mm -hmm. from other things, other than the ones you are avoiding, mm -hmm. thou, now in your list mm -hmm. of things that you want to avoid, you are increasing. You continue increasing the list mm -hmm. of those things that you are avoiding until such a time you find yourself completely alone, locked up in a room. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of it. Somebody has hit the wall. Mm -hmm. They are completely alone. And whatever is in their mind mm -hmm. is how to end this whole scenario. Yeah. In depression, there are two exits. Mm -hmm. One of them is somebody goes through counseling and they heal. Second one is suicide. But when you are alone, you do not have a chance mm -hmm. of getting through counseling. Yeah. Because you cannot even actually come out and say, mm -hmm. I need counseling. Yeah, actually, really I've true. not seen anybody coming out boldly and saying, I need counseling. Yeah. Because when you are depressed, you actually don't know that you are depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, Samson, um, I, in my circle, I, I, I might know a friend or two who went through depression. Well, at first, it was so, so hard to understand what was happening to them. So what are the strategies? And also, we didn't know how to treat the person. So what are the strategies to use uh, when dealing uh, with a person who has suffered depression? How should we, as people, tr uh, as, uh, people who want to help, uh, how should we deal with them and how should they deal with it at first now when it's when it first starts creeping in am i rather can it be controlled in the first stages yeah you can control depression okay if it is discovered early depression uh to me it's like mental cancer okay it has stages uh -huh. and so how do those people uh, around the person how should they uh you know treat their uh, patient the person who is infected who uh, is uh who is affected? When somebody is going, going through depression, yeah. the people around them tend to see some things that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because when I know you for five, six years, mm -hmm. if you change one day, I should be able to know that today, mm -hmm. this person is not behaving like yesterday. But now, the danger is when we see this, we tend to say that this human being has started changing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have gotten something they don't want to engage us. 
all, they have developed another mood. They don't want to, to be with us. Yeah. So we give them space. And this is the danger part of it. Mm -hmm. It is very really dangerous to give somebody space when you do not understand exactly what is going on. Because they are not telling you they don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. They are just walking away. If you give them space, that is the time that you give depression a chance to grow. Yeah. So what you should do is keep talking to people around you. Mm -hmm. And if you notice something that is not working out light mm -hmm. today and tomorrow, mm -hmm. just try and talk about it. When I'm working with you or you are my relative, I should have that openness to ask you, mm -hmm. do you feel like you have a problem? Mm -hmm. Or I saw you doing this. What exactly is going on? Somebody is obviously going to tell you, no, I am fine. Mm -hmm. Because that word fine is what depressed people use to defend themselves yeah. and depend the condition they have. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, no, I'm fine, I'm mm -hmm. fine. It's mm -hmm. just feeling tired, just not feeling like I, I want to do it. Yeah. But when it comes tomorrow, the next day, this word fine starts to lose meaning. Yeah. Because obviously somebody is going to see you're not fine. So yeah. if you come to me and tell me now, Samson, I think you're not fine. Uh, because now, look, you did not do this. Maybe it's work. Look, you have not done this. See, yeah. this is what you did. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It was supposed to be the other way around. So please tell me what is going on. But you also have to be very technical. You don't go like you want to have a, a question answer session. Yeah. Because when you try that, mm -hmm. they will withdraw. Yeah, they'll feel judged. Yeah, they will start withdrawing. Well, uh, also, uh, I wanted to, aside from... Um, uh, aside from counseling, what else worked for you? Well, uh, yeah, uh, aside from counseling, are there other things that pushed you to uh, get over the, the depression? And also, oh, I know that you can also talk to us about your counseling journey, you as a counselor now. Uh, for me, mm -hmm. it was a long journey, a very long history. Counseling was part of it, but it was not everything about the journey. Yeah. Because now, mm -hmm. Uh, as human beings, we also have some little part of religion in mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. The spiritual part of it is also very important. It doesn't matter which religion you believe in, it doesn't matter whatever you believe in. Yeah. As far as you have a spiritual life, mm -hmm. it is very important because spiritual life gives you hope. Mm -hmm. Counselors want to give you hope. So it doesn't matter where hope comes from, but you have to get hope from somewhere. And then you start making new friends. When you realize that you are going through depression, a counselor has already told you mm -hmm. we need to engage because now this and this is happening. These are the signs of depression. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we can certify this condition and classify it as depression. Yeah. You're going to get guided. You need to make new friends. And also, whatever was pushing you to depression, you should learn away from it completely. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter whatever it is, whether yeah. it was marriage, mm -hmm. whether it was your job, whatever was pushing you to depression, first you have to run away from it. Okay. Whether you come to it back and try to use another approach, first you have to keep off from it. Okay. Yes. Well, Samson, let me uh, ask my final question. Time is not on our side. Uh, if you got depressed once, uh, you've maybe you've been depressed once, what are the chances that this uh, depression can happen again? And also, uh, as you talk on that, also uh, make a, a brief statement on mental health awareness, on how important it is, and especially in our modern society today and for the youths. Uh, if you have a history with depression, you have had uh, a phase in your life where you were depressed, you have another chance of getting depressed later in life if you do not treat the current situation correctly. Mm -hmm. And what I advise people is, whenever you realize you have depression and you go through counseling, you start healing and now you can understand what was going on. First, you have to solve whatever it was that p was causing depression. Because if, if you don't solve it, you still have a chance of going back there. And then, come out and talk about it. Every time you talk about your history with depression, you get emotionally strengthened. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Talk about it. Share the story. Talk about it tomorrow and the next day. It is going to be part of your life. You're going to feel comfortable talking about it and also reminding yourself, mm -hmm. your inner self, whatever was causing depression. So that next time, you can be very careful.
Because being careful is the key word here. Whatever was pushing you to depression, do not go back there. And even if you are going back there, mm -hmm. go back with a different strategy. Mm -hmm. You don't make the same mistakes. Then from there, mm -hmm. try to engage people who have also gone through depression. That is why support groups are very important. Mm -hmm. Talk to people about what you went through and how you came out of it. Somebody else is going to listen to it and tell you part of their story. So whatever you think was very big that was causing depression to you, somebody else is going to tell you, I've gone through worse than this. And then from there, mm -hmm. you get that inner strength that and next time, yeah. I'm not going to make the same mistakes. You've talked about support groups. Uh, where can people access these support groups? Or rather, where can they find them? Where, they, where can people going through depression find people who can help them uh, now the support groups? Uh, let me say, currently, we do not have those privileges. Yeah. Because now, mm -hmm. so many people who have gone through this mm -hmm. tend to hide their story. Yeah. And when I realized that there is that gap, that is when I came out mm -hmm. and started talking about my own story. Mm -hmm. You know, I kept the story for about 20 years, but now I'm talking about it freely mm -hmm. because I have realized there is a need for that. And I am in the process of creating these groups. And my target is to have groups in every county mm -hmm. whereby we get counselors who are based in that county, people who have gone through depression within that county, coming together mm -hmm. and forming a group a voluntary group whereby people can share their stories. Yeah. And when we realize there is one individual who requires medical attention other than the counseling, yeah. these same people will be able to take up that issue mm -hmm. and solve it. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Samson Maina. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for enlightening us and telling us more uh, on this topic. Thank you. Well, so that is all we had prepared for you uh, for today. And so... Uh, you back at home, if you know someone or you going through depression, uh, Samson today has told us it is important to tell our stories. It is important to share to other people because you may never know who it might get to. So you can keep talking to us through our social media pages at Y254 channel. That is on Twitter, uh, hashtag Y254 news. And also you can talk to me through my social media page at Ngena underscore Lizzie and uh, we will talk more throughout the week. That's all we had for you. Uh, have a lovely evening and have a lovely rest of the week. Thank you.